Hey y'all, have this big old long sign. It's actually called a shingle when you hang your shingle when you go into business. Um, and I painted part of it the other day, just getting some of it down on here. I'm smearing the chalks, what I'm doing now. But I figured maybe we could hang out while I decorate it. Yesterday I came in and put another coat. You can still see some black through there, but that's kind of the look that I'm going for. Let me see if I can get this going that way. I'll, if there's any comments, I'll be able to see them. I wish that as much as Facebook likes us to do video, that they would give us a better way to know that we're set up correctly ahead of time. I think it's a happy looking sign. I don't know if you can see it that well. I put it up best I could, but it, let me see if I can pick it up. It says Artisan Market, and that's the name of the my local place here where I sell my furniture and paints and stuff like that. Hey Shanna, um, I printed up flyers yesterday and I've got a, uh, an event scheduled and we have three people on the list so far, but one of them's me, <laughs> for uh, Shanna's class that she's gonna teach here at the Artisan Market um, next Tuesday at 10.30. So if you're local, we're gonna have a good time right in this room right here. Um, painting i think it's with a palette knob is it with palette knob shanna it's a really cute chocolate cake with some little dots on it and some beautiful roses on top and it's up on a stand really really cute and i'm i'm excited about it and i'm thinking it would make a great mother's day gift for you know the invitation to the class but i'm hoping that i don't awesome palette knob that'll be so uh enjoyable for people who've only you know done the brushes and things like that everybody likes to learn to do to free yourself up a little bit with the palette knife i feel funny that i'm like not in there with y'all have to have my glasses today because i'm going to try to see kind of close um i brought yellow into the mix i found sitting there so we're going to put some yellow in here and i don't want it to be too too crazy so i don't know maybe i'll just start with going and putting some of some yellow dots on the bright pink ones, which there's just three of those, and see if that is still good. And that needs to be stirred. One more stir stick in here. I've kind of been painting all morning. I finished a blog post this morning on that uh, Southwest Boho Buffet that I did. And so that's on Sisterhood of the Traveling Brush.com if you want to check that out. And uh, then I went in and put some Gator Hide top coat on the green buffet that I'm doing for May. And I'm letting that dry. And then after lunch, I'm going to put some wax. And I'm like, I'm going to work on that sign. I am going to, it's a rainy, dreary day here, and I am going to spend it enjoying myself. So, I like polka dots. Polka dots like me. I'm not trying to make them all exactly round. Can, do I need to back it up a little bit? Can you even see where I'm working? Eek. I'm working on this R right here, yep. So, just some random dot splotches things going in. I like so much how it looks with the blue around the letters, but that's the chalk. You can see I'm already getting it on myself because um, I got it wet. I like that so much that I, I went and found a Dixie Belle. That's Dixie Belle blue, and I'm gonna. that's pretty close to the color of that paint. So I'm going to come back in the end and outline my letters in the Dixie Belle blue. You know, there comes a point in time if you're not careful when you're doing something like this, if you put lines and polka dots and things on every single letter, then it's too busy. Not to say that it might not happen. <laughs> so what are y'all working on? What's anybody working on? What's anybody, you have fun plans for the weekend? Are you up in the middle of a project? Did you just find a new piece that you wanna paint? What is everybody working on? Oh man, that's a big old blob. I didn't mean to do that. 
Oh well. We'll make that a big old, big old dot. It's okay. This is called uh, Daisy Yellow. This uh, Dixie Bell paint here. See, I can move it a little closer. I am, I talked to, my son has a, a gun cabinet. Well, he has a couple of gun cabinets. So, hey, Marguerite. Um, you know, we're, <laughs> we're from the South and he's, he's, you know, I think he got his first shotgun for his eighth birthday, whatever is the general average for hunting around here. He loves to hunt. He takes his little son hunting, who's five, and I got him a gun cabinet one year when he was a little boy still because you know you still need a place to keep your guns and I think he's given that one to his son and then he had a big nice one I think his daddy gave him that one uh, that was his and his wife likes everything to be pretty she has awesome taste on decorating and stuff like that and they have things fixed up real cute and they had they wanted their bedroom furniture redone and and this was before I was painting all the time for people and stuff uh, and they wanted it to you know look vintage and they got it with a cream co cream color with like a, a dry brushed a little bit of a brown over it and it looks real nice and now they you know that the son is getting a little older they're gonna want to move that gun cabinet into instead of in my son's like work room there they're going to move it into her hobby room hunting room whatever you want to call it where he keeps his deer heads because she doesn't let him keep those in the living room uh anyway so she's like well let's get this painted to match the bedroom furniture and their experience wasn't fantastic with the bedroom furniture so um i don't know which color to use here to come back with some of this uh, teal to put in these here because that's going to be a lot of teal on there or whether to come back with the peach and put in the teal then that'll be a lot of peach on there we're going to do the teal um anyway so we're going to do that he's going to bring it over in august and that's going to be my september project and they're going to let me have a little bit of leeway but you know i can't do anything crazy like this or make it you know boho or anything like that but they gave me a little bit of leeway but i'll you know do something more traditional kind of farmhouse looking and stay in their color palette a little bit um but i'm kind of excited about that to get to do something for them i don't know what to do i'm gonna go with lines just go vertical little vertical like dashes i guess you would call them Outdoor kitchen cabinets made with cypress and old barn doors, corrugated. I can't see the whole thing. Let's see. Corrugated. Oh, that's going to be so fine. We are, uh, let's see, you need to match the raw cypress to the old pine barn wood. Well, that'll be a little bit of a challenge, but it should be, uh, it should be fun to do. And as long as you're, you know, loving the little bit of differences that are going to come between the you know the barn wood and the cypress to begin with i think you could probably come up with something really cute the some things that people do i don't know if you're wanting to add any color are like the pickling they used to call it are using a like a stain over both woods to tie them in together not a dark stain i mean it could be a gray stain to tie them both in together and then they would sort of be the same shade or they make teal stains and uh gosh dixie bell has some really cute uh i think it's called no pain gel stain or something like that in some cute colors if you wanted to add any color to it but i feel like you're going more with the barn wood theme and I would think that um, I would probably find a gray stain or make a gray wash 
by just watering down some paint a lot, like maybe 75% water, 25% paint, and put it over the cypress and the barn wood to where they'll at least be the same shade of gray, and then the two color variations will look like you did that on purpose. But that barn wood's gonna be really, really thirsty. Um, that's definitely one thing you always have to remember on that, but yeah, we're, um, we've been planning an outdoor kitchen for probably 10 years, and I don't know how those kind of projects don't ever happen because we got a new fence this year for the cows and <laughs> we still didn't get the out, we got the pool, but it's not been landscaped. It's not, uh, and the outdoor kitchen, I, I brought it up again the other day and showed him a picture I found on Pinterest. I'm like, look how fine this looks. You could come right off the man cave. My husband's a builder, so it would be simple. It's just taking the time to do it. And right off the man cave and put our outdoor kitchen there and look at this cute one. And he's like, oh yeah, that's cute. And I'm sure it was forgotten about as quick as it was brought up. But I know he wants one too. I mean, we spend a lot of time outdoors. That's, you know, what happens when you live where there's nice weather most of the year, I think. Um, but I would love to see pictures of that. Denise, after y'all get done with it, that sounds like it's gonna be gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I have an old barn that's not worth barning in anymore, you know what I mean, on, on some other property that I inherited, and we don't keep any animals out there because, it, you know, the, the way things happen nowadays, it's we're not out there often enough, and if we even put a water pump out there, they steal it overnight, so I d doubt we'll ever put animals out there. And I'm thinking, you know, that that's been in my family for a long, long time. And if it ever has to be torn down, I would want to make something really special for myself and my children and, you know, the family members that are, that are left that remember the barn in its heyday when we were able to still use it as a barn. So once I have a really good project like that, I'm going to rob my own cell. Okay, I think I can do one more without being too cray cray. Um, and it can either be that I can put um, purple in the teal, teal in the purple. There's so much teal all around the outer edges. I mean, I think that's good to tie it in, but I only have two letters that are, well, no, I can't do that because I just used the teal. So what do I have left? I have this peach color, I have the blue that's going around the edges, and I have this plum color. So I could do, leave those all alone. I wanna put diagonal stripes. I'm using way too big of a paintbrush, but again, I might put diagonal lines. Um, we're gonna go with the peach color inside the, um, well, what are we gonna do? We're gonna go with the peach color inside this plum crazy. And I ought to just get, oh, there's a whole pile of brushes over there. Let me go grab a, a something with thinner bristles. So I don't just sit there and they all look alike. Let's see. Uh -huh. I just found a half of a hidden candy bar. Somebody's been hiding in here munching. Okay. Here's some more brushes that were over there. Let's find something smaller. You know what? I might just use this angled brush. This paint's very thick. I mean, I'm using I'm using the Dixie Belle because it, it was here and the colors are beautiful and it is, you know, it is safe to be used outside and everything. So, and but this is going to be hanging under our awning. We're in a historic district, so we have a like an outside area to hang it. 
Let's see, sure, I made the bar out of pallet wood and I have a Peggy Cypress top that I'm pouring epoxy on. Oh my goodness, I, I'm wanting to pour epoxy so bad. I'm, I'm wanting to do the ones like you see that have like the, the glow in the dark blue in the middle and then you pour the epoxy on the outside but you filled up all the holes with something spectacular. I would love to see your pictures. Make sure and share them with us whenever you're done. That's definitely a project that's on my list but my list of projects is so long right now. I want, I've about decided I'm going to paint the interior of our camper, but I don't know when in the heck I'm supposed to do that, but still thinking about doing it. Okay, we're going to go with the Flamingo. And we're going to go in the teal, which is, what was that mermaid tail? And I'm wanting it to go on pretty thick still even though I'm using a thinner brush I love the outdoor projects you know what I mean it seems like whenever you get to do something like that you're motivated for the whole dang year to spend more time outside and the more out time outside the better to me I, I, I love being in the Sun I will still lay in the Sun if given the opportunity uh, and the time and I, I just love being being outside in that I use coconut oil as a like a sunscreen because it's natural and doesn't have any chemicals in it but I, I, I love to do that and it, it does wonders for depression and things like that at this time of the year I just feel like I come into my own I feel so good I, I feel so good every day I want to get so much done I redid, you know, all the plants and got all the pollen off my front porch and all that kind of stuff already. And I've got a few new plants potted, just some tomatoes and stuff like that because I didn't do a garden this year. I've got those uh, out by the pool area. And this weekend we'll go get the chairs out of the storage um, for this year to have that ready. But the, the first year we got that uh, swimming pool installed, it was like in March, late March or early April, something like that. It was freezing cold outside. We swam in there. As soon as there was water in there, we were swimming in that sucker. And I know it was cold. Grown Me and my cousin Diane, grown women, my grandkids, chattering our teeth out there to just be, to be swimming. And last year I swam one time because it was too cold to me all year, even in the middle of August. Oh yeah, here's my new sign, y'all. Is this backwards? Is that backwards to y'all? We're not allowed to say those words anymore, but if you do that, I would appreciate it. And if I need to write them backwards, let me know. I do have the other side to this sign. I painted both sides to it. It was an old sign we had from when there was a boutique here. Thank you, Shanna. The, it's it's a little bit loud, but it it's it'll get noticed, and that's what a sign's for, right? Some people will love it and some people will think, my goodness, is that girl ever gonna grow up? And the answer is probably not if I can help it. Okay, I'm gonna end up putting, some, I'm gonna do big circles. I think I'm gonna use this liner brush. And what color do we have left to do that with? We have the, what have we done? We have this purpley color and that, I don't know if the pink's gonna show up good in that. Is that all I have left? Got the teal going in that, the peach going in that, yellow, have its own self in pink. Well, that wasn't planned out very well. Um, I think more yellow would be okay. If it's not, we can paint over it, right? <laughs> Loud and proud, exactly. I know it. By golly. By golly. You know, there was a lot of years that I was extremely shy. And I'm still shy to an extent, which you wouldn't think since I talked to whoever will talk to me on here. But there were a lot of years where... When I was a child, I was so shy I couldn't speak at all. And there were a lot of years whenever I was, you know, first working, I worked in radio actually in sales. And it got to be so hard that I could just couldn't do it anymore. I could not go in the businesses to 
force myself to have to talk to people who I felt like didn't want to talk to me because I was there to sell them something. And and I was probably right there and I and I just couldn't do it anymore and I really had to work to get outside my comfort zone and you know in my teenage years I was sort of the boisterous person that I am now and enjoyed what I enjoyed and I had just great fun and I had great friends we're still friends to this day you'll probably from time to time see pictures of us scrapbooking and stuff like that together but then after that it's like I lost all the confidence in myself and I just couldn't speak in public anymore and you know I thought well I'm a professional person because that's kind of the work I did at the time I'm supposed to wear you know suits and slacks and be reserved and you know don't do things wrong or inappropriately and anything that would you know affect your career and all that stuff and I sort of forgot who I was you know then I became a wife and a mother and a grandmother and all those things took precedence over being Terry you know and and I don't even painting that dang chicken on a bicycle. I know y'all have heard me say that before. That that just freed me up. The, you know, my best friend Kay, she has told me, oh, you're so crazy, girl. you always been so crazy. And I'm like, man, I forgot that part of me. You know what did it? Now that I think about it, and I, I've mentioned this before to here too, and I don't get no credit for this. I'm just talking. Uh, there's a program called Dressing Your Truth by Carol Tuttle. It's it's free. It doesn't cost anything. I mean, they have stuff you can buy. But to go, uh, you know, read the stuff, see what your type is, and, and all of that stuff is free. And uh, I did that. And it's probably been five or six years ago now. And I was reading that book. There's like four types. And the four types are... You know, you have your type four, which is like your serious, you know, wear black all the time, business suit, shoulder pads person. And I thought, that's that's probably me. And then there was the number three, which was your like steady moving forward, your real go-getter that gets out there and gets stuff done. And I'm like, well, that could be me. I, I do get a lot of stuff done. And then they had the one I wanted to be and was trying to be, which was the loving, caring, gentle, nurturing person. And then they had the fun-loving, silly, you know, do sort of immature, I guess, immature one. And I'm like, well, I'm not that. I'm, I'm business from the minute I wake up to the minute I go to bed. So we know we can strike that one off and we'll go through the process of an elimination. And as much as I want to be the loving caring person i'm not the person to call when you need your toenails clipped i just can't do it i'm, I'm never going to be the type to be a nurse my i have cousins that are my daughter-in-law is I, I, my cousin is a wonderful caring person like that and man you would be able to see on my face that i absolutely did not want to clip your toenails if that was to come up how would that come up but anyway so i'm like well I'm definitely the three or the four. And then they go, then they give you like, uh, and I wore all the colors of the three. The top three person wears like army green and brown and, you know, and like 50% of my closet was army green and brown and the other 50% of my closet was black and had been for years and years and years. And, uh, because I thought it was slimming, not because much of anything else, but you know, they tell you black makes you look slim and then everything you own is black. Uh, but anyway, so I started reading about the features and the other characteristics and you know, I sort of do barrel through things and that sort of reminded me of that three. But the, uh, they wear leopard print and stuff. And that, even though I'm painting something that looks like leopard print right now, that's a huge turnoff to me. I don't know why that's always grossed me out. But, um, and I know it's popular, and I'm sorry if any of you love it. But it never was for me. 
maybe because only wild girls wore that stuff whenever I was young, or that's what my mama told me. But anyway, so they the facial characteristics for the type three was uh, like very deep lines and very um, like chiseled jawline and what they call a lump of clay nose, uh, very prominent nose and very very deep lines in your face and. <laughs> If there's lines, they're wrinkles. You know what I mean? They're, it's, it's not that, that's not my facial characteristics. And they call, oh, they, there's words for each of them too. They call, uh, people will call you hot. If you're a top three, when you're all dressed up and you look good, people will say, oh, you look hot in that. Ain't nobody ever told me I looked hot. Uh, and the top four, which is what I figured I was, uh, then you get to their characteristics and their eyes are exactly straight across. They're, they're, everything is completely symmetrical. They kind of have an oval face, but their, char their nose is perfectly, you know, same size nostril on each side or whatever. And their uh, cheekbones are exactly in the same spot on each side. They're, I got one ear lower than the other. You can probably see that with my glasses cocked up like that. Well, a top four wouldn't have that. But they also are extremely organized people and would have, you know, things lined up just so-so, which sounds just like my husband. But um, I'm like, man, I, I'm not like that. Then they... Uh, and they call that person, let's see, the top two loving, caring person they call beautiful. The top four person, people would compliment you by saying you're stunning. And the top one, people say you're cute. So I'm like, well, golly, I don't, I'll need to go back and read some more of that three. Maybe I am some more of that three. So I went back to the three and there was just more. They, they showed, there's a, like a ton of videos on this in that program. And there was one where they're like, okay, we're gonna look, there's a difference in how a one, two, three, four put stuff in their purse. I'm like, oh my gosh, we don't need to know about that. Well, a top four, I mean a top one has everything in their purse. And I'm telling you, if you ever wanna go to Let's Make a Deal and get selected out of the audience to find a person who has a paper clip and a boiled egg and a thumbtack and one left flip-flop that's probably going to be in my purse and i'm like oh my gosh it's looking like i'm that one there's no way i'm not silly i'm not a silly person and so you know i want the and the characteristics are the round face and you know one eyebrow goes this way and the other one goes that way and and they smile with their eyes and big old smile, <laughs> you know, all this going on. And long story short, even though this hadn't been short, um, I'm a top one and I was shocked. And they tell you when you find your type and you go and get the clothes that match your type, not necessarily just the colors. For me, it would be, this is very type one. It's polka dots for one. And it's uh, lighter colors that have white as the base for them. And my dark colors are navy and brown. But anyway, um, they say one, if you go get your hair how the top one's supposed to wear it, which is curly. I don't know how my hair used to always be straight, but it's curly now because of, of that program. And because I got it layered, it used to all just be one length. And when I got it layered, it just curled up exactly like top one hair does. It's called uh, Dressing Your Truth, Shanna, and they have, the whole program is online, and you can watch a bunch of videos and all that for free and figure out your top. I have the book, of course, and I, and I bought the program because I believe it's important for teaching my granddaughters and stuff. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's, since I allowed myself to remember who I used to be, I, I got rid of everything in my closet. I took a picture of it. I was shocked when I walked in there at how dark everything was. I'm like, oh man, what did I do to myself? And so I went out and I, and I bought, I went to Burke's Outlet, which is a store here that, and, and once you learn it, you, you, it's easy to shop because you walk like in the store and 
you can see your colors all down the aisle so you're not shopping and looking and trying to find this trend or that trend because you know what looks good on your type so i went in and bought two or three shirts you know and uh some jewelry because there's different types of jewelry that each type wears so i bought some you know el cheapo jewelry and some shirts at uh Burke's outlet and for a top one if you know you got it right people are going to say you look cute and I walked in the store I was getting ready to go to my granddaughter's dance recital at the theater across the street and the employees are like look how cute you are today you're just sparkling I'm like you have got to be kidding me you know it, it's nice to get compliments I mean we don't get stuff like that very often or I don't and uh and she said cute and I'm like, oh my gosh. And I felt cute. And I got rid of all of those dark clothes. I, a friend bought me a black t-shirt recently and I had one for OIT when uh, my granddaughter graduated from that for the peanut allergies. And that's the only, I don't have black shoes, purses, panties, nothing. I've not had until those recent two black t-shirts. I've not had anything black in all these years and I feel good in the navy. I love the navy. I, I like the brown and I like the, the bright colors and once I started dressing in those brighter colors I started being happier. Just getting up and putting them on it was a, it was a happier day and it's uh, crazy how that works but you don't have to buy nothing but you know to learn all that there's tons of videos I think it's dressingyourtruth.com but um if you want to buy like the color cards that makes it easy to get used to going shopping until you learn your colors and all that which I did uh, and back then they would only sell you one but now you can get the whole set of four which I did because my uh, granddaughters are twos and one of my daughters is a four and the other one's uh a one but you also learn how to communicate better with other people because you can look at them and almost automatically because of their facial features once you're into it enough know what will look good on them if you were in a clothing industry but uh, you can know sort of what makes them tick I guess is the way to put it um, and you know, if you're dealing with a person that has the long, thin face and the eyes that are drooping down a little bit, that's probably red cheeks. That's probably a type two sensitive person. And you wouldn't want to yell at that person. Or you, if you wanted to, um, you wouldn't want to embarrass them in front of people kind of a thing. If you wanted to work well with that other employee or that child or grandchild or whatever, um, then you would bring them in another room, you know, where if you're wanting a type one to do chores, you're always going to make it fun. Um, and a top four, you're going to want every, that would, this would drive them crazy because they're going to want every letter blocked and straight all the way across. It says, let me see if I can hold it up. It says uh, artisan and then there's a flower and then it says market. This is the artisan market at Get Healthy, where I'm at right now, in DeRitter, Louisiana. And then the other side, we're going to put in half, and then we'll put the Sisterhood of the Traveling Brush logo on half, and then the Sew and Love Couture, my daughter makes clothing, custom clothing, and we'll put that on the other half. But that's... Uh, I, it, it was life changing to me and it reminded me that I like to have fun because I forgot. I, I, I started adulting and took everything too seriously and forgot what made me tick. And I guess that's what spurred it all off and now it's easy to go get clothes. I know exactly, you know, that I look good in collars and that I look good in polka dots and that I look good in light colors and uh, that I don't need no shoulder pads if, if they were to come back in style. There's all of those things, it just makes all of that so simpler, but you, you, or I was just surprised to feel like myself again. It, it was, it was life changing. And that's what led to me creating this polka dot sign. <laughs> and enjoying life a lot more. I don't know how, you know, we get taught so many things in school and by our parents and all that stuff about how we're supposed to act. Like in my day, it was, you know, kids are to be seen and not heard, 
get over there and be quiet. Don't you embarrass me in front of nobody. Don't, you know, kids don't talk, don't interrupt adults, don't, which I still kind of believe in, but kids don't, you know, talk when the adults are talking and uh, things that can be seen as just as respect, of course, but also they're very stifling for a kid like me, you know, like I was. And I absorbed that and learned how I was supposed to behave and how a professional person was supposed to behave and all those things. And now I'm back. And at first, I think my husband didn't know what to think because everything at my house is still neutrals. I mean, it, every everything there is... Well, I have a few things upstairs in, in my studio, of course, but I haven't started putting bold colors and things like that in the house yet, but I switched out all of the... Uh, this was a very fun thing to do, too. I switched out all the knobs in our kitchen. He's very proud of our cabinets because he built them out of, you know, local cherry wood and all this stuff. Well, I went to Hobby Lobby when the knobs were on sale, and I bought, like, 12 different knobs, like a butterfly and a firefly and a crystal and, a, you know, all kinds of different things. And now every cabinet has a different knob, and I absolutely love it. And he was like, you didn't get rid of them other ones, did you? Like, you know, no, I didn't get rid of the other ones. They're in a drawer over there somewhere. But then I went with a little bit happier rugs and bedspreads and bright colored throw pillows and just got out of the neutrals. I love birds. I have some curtains with birds all over them, and I'm sure he still rolls his eyes at that because he's a top four, but that's okay. I'm sure he likes me being happy, too. <laughs> Because it's, you know, when you're the stern business-minded all the time, it can get not boring, but just, I don't know what to say. It can get rough. Because he he's a top four, but he likes to have a good time. But if you ever feel like you want to know a little bit more about personality traits and how to easily pick out your clothes and all that, I highly recommend that program. The color of the chalk was a better color for the outside of all these, but I think it's still going to be just fine. If I don't like this when I come back from lunch, what I'll do is mix a little bit of this uh, Dixie Belle Blue with some of that mermaid tail to come up with a lighter version of the mermaid tail that I used on here and on the edges and then come back over this a little bit with that. But you want it to stand out. I mean, that's the whole point of the sign. I am fasting, and I don't know what time it is right now, but I'm going to have lunch today at 12 o'clock, and it will have been 40 hours since I ate any, had anything besides water. There's a whole new bunch of science out about how fasting helps to regenerate new cells and get rid of bad cells in the body and all that kind of stuff so I'm gonna try it for a little while what they call alternate day fasting so I'm gonna fast every other day and I normally do intermittent fasting where I eat 16 I mean I fast 16 hours and eat eight which definitely gave me more energy and made me feel better and I'm still gonna do that on my off days but on my on days 
or I still plan on it. It just depends on whether I can continuously do 40 hours at a time or whether I'll need to eat breakfast on, you know, that following morning or not. But I'm excited to go to lunch with my daughter in a minute. I was being too worried about whether I was getting, making the flowers look right. So now I'm going outside the lines on purpose here. When you're using this little bitty brush, it takes a lot longer. I was, I, meant, I posted a picture yesterday of like a really cute, like a uh, USA map, but it was like all wooden cutouts of the states. And you like mount it on your wall. And then uh, when you go to a state, you bring back a photograph and cover up the shape of that state. And I mentioned that next month we're going on our Great Mother's Day adventure, which is never at Mother's Day, but that's still what it's called. And we're going to go to Oklahoma for five days and then to Arkansas, to Hot Springs for the weekend. And I didn't mention all that part of it whenever I was in there. And somebody said, oh, are you coming to Oklahoma City for a workshop? And I thought, how fun would that be? Maybe that's maybe that will change into be my retirement plan. Maybe I'll just get to go pick out a place to go and find a furniture paint, painter there to go paint with and hang out with. That would be a fun fun retirement plan. And people who are type one say the word fun a lot, and I know I say it a lot. People who are top four say the word perfect a lot. That's probably my secondary still. Because I do say that a lot. And I want things to be just so-so. But my body just don't let that happen. That it does make me very comfortable when they are. I need some of the yellow in the flower for sure. I'm going to do that too before I go to lunch. If I was having to worry about whether each of these letters were straight and aligned and all that, I would be so stressed out right now. And the old me, seven or eight years ago, would have been doing just that and hated every minute of the process and the song afterward.
Thank you, Shanna. That's, I, I love it too. Now, now that I can be, you know, accepting of that. That's when I sat down, I'm like, gosh, how am I going to do this? We're going to have to do it on the silhouette and use the vinyl and make it so-so. And then I was like, girl, this sign is supposed to represent this market and how you feel and the type of work that you do. There, that That's just not, that's just not the way it needs to be. And... I drew that little bitty A at the beginning and that great big R beside, well, I drew the flower in the middle first because that's the way my brain works. And then I uh, drew the little bitty A and R down there and laughed about it. And I'm like, well, if I can laugh about it, it must be right. Must be right. We're almost to the end. Heck, I think I might even sign it. May as well put a T down there, huh? And what year is this? 19. Okay, I'm going to go back and put some yellow in that flower because I feel like it needs it. And then I'm going to leave it alone for a little while until I come back from lunch. happier already Oh, thank you, Shanna. Oh, thank you so much. I think about that all the time. I, I wrote, somebody sent me a, like an interview request on uh, some group that I'm in. And uh, we had, to, it's for a podcast about people who have what they call a side hustle, which this is my side hustle because obviously I'm, I'm a naturopath during the day at, in, in the other room. And they're like, what, you know, what has been like a big um, thing? How did you celebrate when you sold anything or whatever? And one of the first things that came to my mind that really uh, stood out to me was when y'all came to visit that day from Manny and uh, you loved the painting that I didn't care so much for when I was making it. I was so frustrated with that. And I'm like, I, I felt like, you know, they, they wanted to take a picture with me. Like it was like, it, you know, that, that I think I am making a, a difference in what I do with, you know, other women to have just the, you know, the power within themselves to get out there and, and go for it and enjoy their life. So that makes me feel good for you to say that. And I, and, and you made me feel really good doing that. And I'm glad to know that the, the painting is there because that was, definitely a frustrating experience <laughs> it was supposed to be white and didn't turn out white at all but I think it's because I'm not supposed to paint white so <laughs> but anyway I'm that that makes me feel really good because that that's you know the only reason that I or way that I can take myself out of my comfort zone and come on here to share every day you know instead of everybody wants to wait till they're not overweight until get their hair dyed or wear a nice outfit and put your lipstick on I'm like Man, I want people to be comfortable being them. I, I want somebody to get on here and say, oh my gosh, I'm going to go paint something now, you know? So I'm hoping that's what happens, and I appreciate y'all so much, and uh, you make me feel really good and really special, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.